Hello my friends, welcome back for another Oxygen Not Included tutorial. Today, as you can see from the title of the map that I've got here, this is going to be all about the basics of food. And I thought we'd do this uh, tutorial just a little bit differently and talk about uh, f this from like the start of the game. Um, only because there's going to be a lot of talk about natural plants, domesticating them, a little bit of touches on temperature control, and then we can do the rest of what we need to in this area rather than go into some sterile map. So let's talk about uh, what you're going to see when you first start the game when it comes to food. What you'll see are a lot of these things that are buried like muckroot, and this also depends on the map that you're playing on, but they all have kind of the same properties where there will be food that's kind of just out here uh, waiting for you to go dig it up. So the first thing you're usually going to want to do is start digging to those other areas so that you actually have access to this other food and you can take advantage of this right away. You also will spawn with a box of uh, nutrient bars, which they just kind of give you at the beginning because it'd be pretty rough if you spawn here with no food. So that will be your sources of food to start out. So it's up to you to kind of start digging and getting access to these other things. But the next step in food is really domesticating these plants. And what I mean by that is that these plants are planted in a way that they're just kind of growing naturally and they're going to grow very slowly. So if you click on one of these things, we'll start with mealwood since we're going to be talking about. Mealwood grows every 12 cycles wild in the wild. But domesticated, it grows every three cycles, meaning that you can, this is really going to be needed to push out enough food for all these dupes that you might want to create. So the key to, to getting these things domesticated is you need to understand what it's going to require. So for example, these will require dirt every cycle. These are bristle blossoms, another type of food that you can grow. These are going to require water every cycle. So you'll need to make sure you have adequate resources to continue to grow food and also keep an eye on those resources, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So if we're ready to start domesticating food, the things you'll want to research, uh, and let me go ahead and open this up real fast. The things you'll want to research are going to be located at the very top. Uh, the first two research items you'll probably want to get are going to be one of, are going to be these two actually. Want to get to these farm tiles sooner rather than later because they're going to be the things that we can plant uh, mealwood in. And that's probably going to be the first plant you will domesticate. Depending on the map, uh, you'll probably want to stay on mealwood for a decent amount of time. But you also need to watch the dirt that it consumes to make sure you don't run out. So I've got a bunch of cheats on right now, so I'm just going to speed through this really fast. So hooray, clap. We now have the option to uh, plant mealwood. So let me clear all these alerts here really quickly, which I know I talk about every once in a while, but <laughs> just have to do this in the background. So once we have that, let's find a place to place our farm tiles. Um, you can build your base out in any way you really want to. And this is one of the instances in which I don't believe that bl building your base in any particular way to accommodate food is really all that necessary. Uh, but I will still show the way that I will typically build what I'll typically do is I'll measure out blocks that are about 26 tiles wide and 4 tiles tall so that anything within this area can be transformed into different rooms or you can expand or you can shrink different areas. And they'll still fit into a lot of the common room sizes for things like ranching or bedrooms or things like that. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and carve out a section here and then I'm going to start planting a bunch of these farm tiles or rather building a bunch of these farm tiles. We'll do something like this. And once we have a lineup here, what you want to do is you want to start digging up the actual mealwood or go digging around for more seeds. You can see when I dug this out, a bunch of stuff fell out. A lot of that's going to be the resources that was there, but there's a bunch of buried objects here like this stuff. Uh, you can see them every once in a while, uh, just kind of scattered around the place. A lot of the times those are going to be seeds so you could actually start growing food. So let's go ahead and click on one of these farm tiles. We'll plant a mealwood seed. And then if you want to, you can copy the settings and just kind of drag it over all the others and it'll plant a whole row as soon as possible. Or more specifically, queue up a job for being planted. Stinky's a little bit slow on that applause, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and plant these mealwood seeds. And now once these are planted, these plants inside here are going to be constantly requesting dirt. So every, uh, every so often your dupes will bring a big uh, load of dirt over to the plant that needs it and they will drop it off and the plant will consume the dirt in exchange for obviously growing and producing food for you. So we'll see all this uh, process here happening. Speed this up just a tad. So now we've got duplicates coming over here and eventually we'll run out of seeds. We'll get a notification that we can't plant more seeds, but what we do have planted is stuff that we can actually work with. 
So these will just be open errands now um, that your dupes will report to every once in a while. Uh, you will eventually want to get uh, farmers that are just flat out prioritized to do those jobs. So let's say we want Stinky to be our farmer, for example. You can raise the priority by ticking the box under farming and he'll prioritize those farming jobs above pretty much everything else depending on the, the priorities that you have set. You can also make Stinky better at his job too by going into these skills and selecting the farming skills. Uh, that will just generally make them quicker at what they're doing. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's move on to the next stage of, of plants you may want to might want to put down here. Let's talk about blossoms, which you're probably going to find on this uh, Terra asteroid, which is kind of the starter asteroid. They won't show up on the forest, but this is the second of what I will call three basically viable food types. Uh, one's going to be mealwood, one's going to be blossoms, and one is going to be meat, which we will cover later. Blossoms are different. Uh, they require water as their uh, irrigation, or basically for their food in order to grow. So what you want to do with these blossoms is you'll want to plant them in a new type of tile, which is going to be these hydroponic farm tiles. This is also going to assume that you have um, access to power and access to plumbing and all that stuff too. Because the idea behind this is that uh, you can just pump the water straight into these things and not have your dupes go down to a body of water, pick up some water, and run it all the way back. So it, it kind of automates the job of needing to take materials here all the time. Whereas this mealwood won't really have a choice. Your dupes are going to have to run in there and put it in there on a regular basis. So let's go ahead and plant some of these new tiles, which are going to be these hydroponic farm tiles. Plant them down like that. We'll have them requesting blossom seeds. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll copy the settings to put them everywhere. The blossom seeds could be a little bit more rare, or if you wanted to, you could also go dig up some of these older plants too so that you get the seeds back from them so that you can domesticate them and get them more quickly. Now we need to actually go to a body of water. So what I would probably do here is I just like dig a hole, which I don't want to have one of my dupes fall down. So let's go ahead and just dig a hole like, I don't know, like this. All right, now that we've got this set up, we're going to go ahead and build some ladders, which I'll typically do just to allow for some ventilation and space and stuff. So I'm going to build it down to this pool of water. Once I'm down there, I need to have some research done for my liquid pumps, which you can find here. It's just some more basic research right there. And you'll probably also need to drop some power sources. So let's go ahead and put a pump down. It can be anywhere kind of near the bottom. I'll sometimes put it lower so that it gets the whole pool all at once, but uh, this will kind of be moved around over, this f over the course of the game too, so I wouldn't worry too much about the exact placement. Then we need some pipes to run up here, so we'll run up some pipes. And the way you want to run pipes into these guys is I typically will run pipes all along the top of them, and then I'll just draw one pipe down at a time. This will just assure that you don't get any weird piping mistakes happening so that the water is all flowing in one direction and independently going into each tile. Once we have that, we need some power. Let's drop a manual generator and let's drop a battery, which are just going to be ways to generate and store power. Go ahead and do something like that to hook them up and then hook it up to our pump. Once we have that, the pump will start working as soon as we have any power going, which there we go, turners on it. The water will flow up here and it will just be consumed by these plants as frequently as they need it. So they'll just kind of sip on that water uh, forever. So uh, one other thing that we need here, by the way, and I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more in depth in other tutorials. We're not going to get too crazy here, but these things also need light. So you can see a requirement is illumination uh, in order to grow in either the wild or in domesticated care. So we'll go ahead and drop a light that covers all these as much as we can. You can space them out to be a little bit more efficient. I'm just doing this for the sake of going fast. So go ahead and grab those. We'll run some wire and there we go. Now we have light and now we have water being pumped over to our blossoms. And now these things are gonna grow and they will eventually drop food and your farmer dupe will be the one that actually harvests them more than likely and you've got food so you have a sustainable source of food throughout the game and food and oxygen together are basically the two vital things that you always need so that you don't die um so that's uh it's definitely something that's very very important here let's talk about as the game goes on as the game goes on you're going to kind of explore the map i'm going to use my little uh cheater tools here by setting this on to a sandbox game which uh is going to be in here Sandbox mode, enable, okay, done, resume. So 
What you're eventually going to do is you will go out on the map, which we're going to use this handy dandy reveal tool. And you'll find a whole bunch of other stuff around here. Uh, there's a lot of different biomes, a lot of other stuff spawning here. There's a big ice biome. And in each one of these, you're going to find all kinds of new and crazy stuff. One thing you do want to pay attention to, though, is that if your food is going to be exclusively like this mealwood or these bristle blossoms, you need to pay attention to the temperature that these things require as well. Because if your base ever overheats, then your food can't grow and you're basically dead because you have no food source. So pay attention. And I know this is in freedom units. Uh, people keep pestering me about this all the time, but I just think it's funny to have people requesting it and just refusing to conform. Uh, I will eventually, but I'm just going to take the pleasure in that right now. But uh, they will have a range here of temperature that they can possibly tolerate. And if you, whoa, if you kind of scan around at the temperature, this starting biome is going to be a very temperate temperature. So that's where these things are naturally going to grow. So that's going to be fine. But if you get down into these other ones, you can see the temperature is much higher the temperature that these both can tolerate is in the 80s. So 86 for this one, and I think this other one is just... Oh, it's also 86. Okay. So if we find anything over 86, uh, that's a problem. And most of these biomes are over 86. So cooling is definitely a big deal to keep your plants alive, to make sure your base doesn't overheat. So generally, you'll want to focus all of your farming in the starting area and into the center of your base as much as you can because that's going to be the most insulated from all the temperature drift from all these other biomes. Uh, cooling itself is a whole different beast uh, that I do have another video for in case you're interested in that, in case you're dying to that. But yeah, uh, you definitely want to make sure you keep your food cool. Cool water is one of the best ways to do it because as it's sitting in these pipes, it will also cool everything around it and kind of exchange its temperature. So cooling water is probably one of the first things you'll need to solve. And we're going to talk about that mostly in other videos, so check those out if you need to know how to do that. Another thing I'm going to mention, and this is basically the final food type, and that's going to be meat. Uh, meat you're going to get from the critters that you will find around the map, so let me just clear out a nice uh, space here. There we go. Say we have tiles on all this, we're just going to make a big mess here for just a second. And let's say we have something like this. Uh, I just talked about ranching literally yesterday as this is being filmed. So if you want to know more about ranching, then check that out. But the basic idea with ranching is that if you find critters around the map, um, you can ranch them and they can be a significant source of food for you. So let's grab these hatches, which are probably something you're going to see first. We'll drop a handful of those. And if you kill these hatches, which you can do manually, there's a lot of other ways you can do, uh, they will drop meat. And there we go, which you can see it kind of hidden behind there, but it's definitely there. Uh, the meat is going to be a very sustainable means of food if you can increase your hatch population or any other critters population and kill them for their meat and eat it. Um, your progression of foods should not really deviate very often from this mealwood, bristle blossoms, and meat. I don't see a real reason to invest in any other type of food. But like I said, we will eventually talk about all this stuff in more detail. This is just meant to be the basics for right now. So let's talk about a couple of other things. Um, I want to talk about cooking a little bit. So cooking does two things, or can do one to two things, that is. If you drop down these micro mushers, electric grills, and gas ranges, this will tell you what you can do uh, with any of the foods that you find around the map. So these are all the recipes on the grill. These are all the recipes on the uh, m micro musher. And these are all the recipes on the gas range. So the idea behind this is you can take the foods that you produce and turn them into foods that will make your dupes a little bit more happy. And in some cases, it actually does increase the uh, quantity of calories. So you're kind of generating free food by cooking it, which makes a little bit of sense, but it also kind of doesn't. But whatever, we'll just roll with that. A couple of very simple things I will tell you is that mush bars are awful and they waste, dupe, they waste dirt, so definitely don't worry about making any of those. Also, don't make lice loaf. Uh, lice loaf is, will basically take these meal lice that grow from this meal wood. It'll turn it into a bar in which you have to use water for that. But this is extremely expensive uh, for just lice loaf. So I would not make that either. These other two things, if you can farm them and get to them and use them, if you want to, that's fine. Uh, I don't particularly care for it that much. So I don't usually do that much with these guys. So I'm just going to deconstruct that. 
The electric grill, however, is the first point in which you can start getting a little bit of use out of this. So you can see the exchange rates that you get here. If you use a bristle berry, which drops from one of these, you're going to provide it 1600 calories and it'll put out 2000 calories. So you're kind of increasing the amount of calories that one of those berries will give you by about 25%. Plus it raises the quality of the food. So cooking is definitely something that's very useful and typically a colony of a size of maybe like 15 dupes or so will usually have like one cook that's dedicated to do nothing but prepare food. Um, you can also limit what your dupes eat. So if you don't want them to eat the raw foods, you can just disable that from this menu here in consumables. So that's something you can also do. The gas range, oh, by the way, I should also mention that barbecue is like the final boss of practical foods. Um, this is just requires meat. It used to require more, um, but it will take meat and it will also add that 25% bonus onto the calories. But this quality will increase to the point that it will give your dupes so many, so much extra morale combined with other things that you can uh, create for them to make them happier um, so that you will allow them to get very deep into these skill trees. Uh, morale will allow you to get up to these like rocket piloting, mechatronics engineering is really important for shipping. All this stuff is really more, much more accessible if they have better quality of food and some rooms to eat that food in and do other stuff in, which I'll talk about in, well, let's just talk about it right now. Uh, let me clear out the rest of this though. If you wanna cook these other things, I would not super strive for many other recipes. I think between gristle berries and barbecue, there's not really a big reason to make anything else unless you happen to have a lot of pakus that are dropping fillets. We'll talk about a lot of all these other food types in other tutorials though. Same thing here, um, a lot of stuff you're not really going to have a practical use for. I've sometimes used these stuffed berries. Uh, peppers are not terrible to, to ranch, or sorry, to farm. But yeah, uh, the rest of this is kind of flexing, especially something silly like this that requires barbecue, a frost bun, and lettuce. That's, those are like some of the hardest foods in the game to get. You'll get crazy um, buffs from creating things like this, but by the time you hit barbecue, your dupes are usually so deep in the skill tree that you're not going to gain much more from it. So I just wouldn't worry about that too much. All right, speaking on the topic of morale, let's talk about one of the first buildings or, or rather rooms you will want to create when you start a new game. So I'm going to drop a door. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to drop a door. I'm going to drop a couple of tiles here. And if I do this, this will create a room that looks like this. Uh, whenever you have doors, and you can even keep those doors open and they will still give you the same benefits. But whenever you have uh, a door and an enclosed space, the game will treat it as a room. One of the first rooms you want to build is this great hall because you can see the morale bonus that you get down there. And this is very cheap to build. This is literally one of the first things I will do in every single game. So uh, in this great hall, uh, all we need to do for this is we need to have some mess tables. We need to have a decor item that gives us plus 20 decor and we need some kind of recreational building. So the research we'll need to grab for this really fast is going to be, uh, let me scroll down here. It's gonna be this decor item right here, this planter, so we can plant one of the plants that we dig up. We're also gonna to wanna to grab this employment, which is gonna give us access to this water cooler. So what I'll do is I will clear my alerts because of course it gives us alerts every time we research something. So what I'll do is I will grab a, whoops, in furniture a water cooler and I will immediately disable this by the way because I don't want dupes to be bringing water here. It will still give you the bonus if you disable it. And then I will plant a flower pot or I guess build one. We need to plant something later. And then pretty much any seed that's here except for the sporkid seeds, don't mess around with those. Those are real bad. Uh, like the briar seeds are one of the first ones you're probably going to find. We're going to ask a dupe to plant it and then we're also going to build some mess tables. You usually build one for each dupe. There we go. Then when the dupes get assigned to these tables, during their meal times, they will go eat in here and they will get a tremendous morale bonus that will last you quite a while to get them up into the skill trees as they start to learn new things. So this is now considered a great haul. You can see the morale bonus right here, plus six. And yeah, this is very simple to do. Really no reason not to. And I will typically wanna put this next to a place where the food is either cooked or stored or both. Uh, just so that the start of the day, let's say we have some uh, beds over here, for example. Let me dig this out real fast. Let's say we have some beds uh, and our dupes basically sleep like right here. You can also make this a room, by the way, which I'll just do for the sake of the uh, entertainment of it. So 
There we go. We now have a barracks, which gives us a little bit. There's also a bunch of sand in our way. We now have a barracks, which gives us a little bit of morale. But let's say my routine for the day for my dupes is that they go to sleep. The next day, they wake up and they immediately go and eat some food. I want to build these two things pretty close to each other and also the storage of this pretty close so that they'll wake up, they'll grab the food, they'll go eat, and then they'll run off to work. Um, definitely minimizing the movement of everything and making sure that I have a ample setup for my uh, base to be very efficient for the typical things they will do every day. You could also put a bathroom nearby because they'll often need to use the bathroom around the same time or a recreation room nearby because if they have free time and they've already done all the other things they need to do, they'll just go uh, hang out here often or they will go hang out in front of recreational buildings or whatever you want to do to get them to hang out somewhere to get that added room bonus. You could do that also. Uh, let's talk about storage a little bit and I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this and this is yet another thing that I find pretty funny that people are very passionate about. Um, that I'm not, but I'll explain what it is. So there's a couple of different ways to actually store your food uh, in order to prevent a couple of different things. Uh, food storage is definitely going to be a kind of a big deal because if you're growing a bunch of food and you're spending water and you're spending your dirt down to the point that you might run out and you're just spoiling the food that it creates, you're effectively just kind of flushing resources away for no real reason. Um, so food storage is something that's going to help your food last longer and it's also going to be useful in some cases to prevent it from being like a big germ factory uh, and we'll talk about both of those. So let's talk about the most basic food storage option. It's this ration box of course which you can get from the same research that we got earlier so you should have it pretty quick. But the ration box is going to be kind of the first thing you'll want to do but instead of just building out on flat tiles like this what I would recommend is kind of building it down into a little bit of a pit, if that makes sense. Uh, I chose a really bad spot to do this because this is all in the way, so let me fix this really fast. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and drop a furniture over here. Yes, I would like one furniture, please. And we'll rebuild our room. But what you'll want to do is build a little bit of a pit and then put your ration box in the bottom of it. You could also build some ladders over the top just to help out with a little bit of mobility. But the idea here is that what will happen is eventually this pit will fill up with carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is a heavier gas, it will sink down to the bottom of your base. You can see it's just staying right here and not moving anywhere. And if I were to spawn a bunch more carbon dioxide, which we might as well do, uh, we can see it kind of settle in the pit. I'll just spawn it all over the top and it will eventually fall and settle down into place. So that's the idea with this, and the reason that you want to do that is because when the ration box is sitting inside carbon dioxide, it considers that a sterile atmosphere, which means that uh, the food will last a little bit longer. The big problem with that is that germs don't really get killed with that, though. So this is kind of like an early game, a cheapo solution that you can roll with for a little while that will take care of a good amount of the food storage needs that you'll have. Uh, by the way, I need to actually set this to be for everything and have dupes take it there. Uh, so yeah, let's spawn a whole bunch of food and then we can see these buffs as soon as that settles in. I'll, I'll just paint the carbon dioxide in for right now. Just take my word for it that it will eventually settle in that pit. But if we've got this surrounded by it, you can see the buff that's on here every once in a while. As soon as I get this oxygen out here. Oh, that's why. There's oxalite that's messing this up. All right, brush, 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 brush. All right. So, what you'll see is you'll see this little buff on here that says sterile atmosphere on the ration box. And that's exactly what you want if you want to store food. It needs to be in some kind of sterile place. And if it can be in a cool place, that's even better, which is what we'll talk about next. Uh, like I was mentioning, the ration box that's sitting in the uh, carbon dioxide will help it stay fresher a little bit longer. But it's not going to kill germs and it doesn't do the best job of anything of all the food storage options out there. So... What I'm going to recommend, and I know people are going to get upset about this, is I would recommend at some point, uh, once you have a very stable power grid, dropping one of these refrigerators. Um, this is the easiest set it and forget it type of solution. And this really riles people up sometime, but sometimes, but the idea with the refrigerator is that it's going to be one of the best methods to store your food because it keeps it cool and it uh, keeps it fresh. So, or sorry, it, keeps, it kills germs and it keeps it fresh, which are the two food storage problems that you need to solve. So, I've said many times, I don't think it's that big of a deal just to big up, build a refrigerator. It does take consistent power usage, I understand that. 
I just think that the power usage is worth it, especially if you are a new player and you're not familiar with some of the more advanced storage methods. Um, so I think this is totally fine. I'm just going to quickly gloss over another option here. And another option is uh, using very cold water to store uh, your food. There's a bunch of other things you could do, but this is the most elegant solution that I've found. So what I would probably do for this is I would set this up. I'm going to rebuild this really fast. Uh, and I will build this. We probably wouldn't build this right here and block off all of our food, but I'm just going to invalidate a lot of this for the time being, just for the sake of going faster. So let's just go ahead and build something kind of like this. What I would do with this is I would have a uh, storage bin inside here. And then I would have my, uh, or sorry, I would put the storage bin in a different spot slightly. Let's deconstruct this. I would put the storage bin a little bit further over so that we can uh, get our ration box in there. Something like this. Oh, there's all kinds of junk in the way. Why is this game trolling me so hard? I'm just trying to show these good people an example. Jeez. All right, so what I would do is I would drop a storage bin, something like this, and then I would drop a ration box, which is gonna be looking something like this. And then I would put a ladder leading down here. And then the, what I would do is I would fill this up with water. So let's grab some water. Do something like this. And then what I would do is I would start asking for ice to be delivered here. There are biomes you can mine into, which I would really encourage you to do to come get some of this ice. So uh, let's do something like this. Let's just draw a quick little uh, line over here to get it out. And we could just destroy everything that's in our way. Die, polluted water, ha ha. So I would probably dig into it something like this. You don't need to get this urgently, but ice is very, very useful. Uh, so what I would probably do is have a, a pit of water here, preferably cool water if you have access to it. Let's build some toilets so our dupes stop complaining, by the way. There we go. So I would, I'd build a, a pit of water here, and I would ask it for ice as much as I can. Probably not a ton, maybe like, well, literally two tons, but not a whole lot. Um, and then what should happen is if your dupes have access to this ice, which we must have missed a spot somewhere because they don't. Yep, here we go. If they have access to this ice, What op an option that will be on this uh, storage bin is liquefiable. You can set it for ice, set it pretty high. And this will eventually cool this water down to the point where you're getting the same effects from a refrigerator, but you're not paying for the power cost. You also don't necessarily need to make it this deep. I could make this one more up. But the idea is so that your dupes don't get the uh, debuff from having to go into water, like the wet feet debuff or the soaking wet debuff or whatever else, because they have to enter that. But yeah, I would just do something like this. Have the dupes bring it here, or you could set up a shipping system to drop it in here. Eventually, this will get cold enough to kill any germs on it and to preserve it. Um, so that's that's definitely what I would recommend in terms of a simple-ish storage solution. Let's talk about a couple of other things that can be useful and also one thing that can be a little bit of a trap and then we'll call this uh, tutorial pretty good. So what I would also recommend is uh, getting into this shipping tech as soon as you... Not necessarily as soon as you can, but it's very, very useful. And the reason why is because if you set up something like this, you could set up a shipping network, which I have a whole video on, by the way, to ship all this stuff around manually and not have your dupes running this stuff all around for you. So if I were to do something like this and grab all of the food that is produced here by these bristle blossoms and then ship them back uh, to the place where they're being cooked, and then you could, even if you wanted to be really fancy, ship them back over and have it be dropped off in this area. You might not even need a ration box at that point. You're eliminating a lot of stuff that your dupes would have to do manually. So that all your dupes would have to do is harvest it, then you could ship it back to your cooking area, drop it in the storage places, whatever you need to do. And if it's all nearby in this one little area, then you're getting super duper efficiency out of all that stuff. Um, and it, get, it goes a long way. So I'd recommend looking into shipping if you're kind of further along in the game and you have access to that. One other thing I would not recommend, uh, and this is gonna be the last thing I talk about, is gonna be greenhouses. So if you look inside this room overlay, there is a room here that basically says crops grown within our greenhouse can be tended with farm station fertilizer to increase their growth speed. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is just not worth it. Uh, this seems like a cool thing. There is a station for it that you get pretty early on that makes it look like a really great idea to grow your food that way. Um, I'm just not a subscriber to that theory. And the reason being is because the network of things you need to set up in order for this to actually work correctly is just so complicated. And it takes way more time and power and resources than is really necessary to grow your food. So I personally do not recommend it. You can mess around with it if you really want to. The setup would have to be something pretty complicated. So we'd have to have a fertilizer synthesizer to make fertilizer for us. There are also occasionally little tiles of fertilizer around the map, especially in these starting biomes, which I'm having a hard time finding right now. Here's some right here. This is only 50 kilograms. It's not really going to go that far. Um, if you need to produce your own, we can actually see what's required in order to do that. Uh, there's three different ingredients, and it doesn't say immediately, so let's try to get all this stuff hooked up really fast. Uh, but it's going to be polluted water, it's going to be phosphorite, and it's going to be dirt. So you're effectively adding those as costs to everything that you're growing in addition to what you might still already need. So let's say in this uh, room I was growing bristle blossoms, for example. If I wanted to make a greenhouse, I would do something like this. I would wall this off and put a door there, like so. I'd put the farm station in there, which I'd probably put it a little bit closer. That was probably not a great idea to put it uh, down like that. So let's grab uh, the farm station. And there we go. It's going to be like, oh, good job. This is a greenhouse now, which means this can be used. But we still need to produce fertilizer, which is going to be very, very expensive. I'm just going to go through this exercise really fast just to demonstrate all the extra resources that are going to be needed. And I'm going to be dropping a bunch of cheater stuff and spawning stuff, which is very, uh, very cheater of me rather than doing it the honest way. But you know what? There we go. So we need some polluted water. We need some phosphorite. So let's go ahead and spawn some of that as I struggle to type. We'll dig all this out. And we have dirt already. So we have all this stuff hooked up. Let's set up some pumps to get the uh, liquid, or, or sorry, polluted water there. There we go. And let's set up some power to power a pump. There. So if we do need, if we do want to produce it, uh, we need to have dupes constantly babysitting this by running supplies there. Uh, I'm going to also stop requesting on this so that they uh, can pay attention to what we need them to do. But they'll be constantly running supplies there. I'll be burning polluted water, which is a pretty valuable resource. I'll be burning my dirt even faster than I was before. Um, and especially if I'm growing blossoms by this point, I should ideally not be growing mealwood because it's just a worse plant. If I can afford to be on all blossoms or if I can afford to be on all barbecue and ranching. This is just so much maintenance and so much power over time just to help increase the growing speed of these uh, plants. So my recommendation is just to continue to increase your plants uh, count without using any of the farm stations or fertilizer or anything like that. I have heard people ask about this and talk about this, um, wondering if this is worthwhile. I'm just going to flat out say that it's not. So I would just not worry about that. Okay, so those are the basics that I have for food. Uh, my plan is to talk about a lot of these other foods in detail. Um, if that detail is really needed for people to play the game better, I'll talk about a lot of the other different uh, types of food in other tutorials. So when those come up, uh, definitely feel free to check those out. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions or comments or whatever. I do uh, at least I think a decent job of keeping up on those comments and responding, so drop anything down there that you might have. I'll see you back here for another tutorial and another set of videos here really soon, so yeah, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.